Okay, in this screencast, I am going to show you how to fill out this chart on the back of your packet. The purpose of this chart is to make really clear distinctions between what's going on with global climate change and what's going on with the hole in the ozone layer. So I want to start out there with the problem because we do have a normal state of affairs for the greenhouse effect, which is a good thing, but the problem is when there's too much, and we call that global climate change. Now this used to be called global warming. But again, the problem with that is it misled people to think that scientists meant that everything was warmer all the time. And that's absolutely not the case. What the case is, is the global average temperature is increasing every year. But we are also every year seeing more extreme temperatures. So we'll go from having an incredibly hot summer with record hot days to having a winter where we see snowfall in every state on the continental United States. So again, those are global extremes. But as a whole, the climate is warming. So this is a, a very significant change in verbiage that they want us to reflect on the AP exam, that it's global climate change that is occurring. Again, this is the problem state for the normal state greenhouse effect. So what is the greenhouse effect? Well, it's simply just the heating of the troposphere. And again, that is a good thing because if the troposphere didn't get hot, we'd be too cold for life on Earth. We've got to have some type of warmth. And again, the nitrogen and the oxygen don't get us warm. Only those certain greenhouse gases do. So what are those greenhouse gases that get us warm? They're also the bad state chemicals. Um, but what those are, the chemicals responsible, we've got water vapor, we have CO2, carbon dioxide, you have, I'm trying to list them in an order so I get the right two last. You get methane. You also get nitrous oxide. And finally, ozone and CFCs. Okay? So those are the chemicals responsible in both the good and the bad state. The explanation of what's going on is the molecules of the greenhouse gases absorb heat. So they get really, really hot. Okay, explanation of the bad state, really simple. We've got the same gases involved, it's just too much. Okay, so we expect that trees are going to take in CO2, that humans are going to release CO2. We know that there's a water cycle. All of these things are natural. Termites produce methane, cows produce methane. We have all of these things naturally in play. But when it gets to be too much, we see a shift in temperature that is not what we expected. There is an international agreement on the greenhouse effect, and this was the Kyoto Protocol. The stance on it is the USA said, no, USA did not sign. Again, this was largely at least said to be an economic concern. Important to note, because at no time did George Bush say, I don't believe global warming is happening. Instead, he said, this li leaves China with an unfair economic advantage. And remember, this is before our economic downturn. So this was a very good um, very good foresight in, in the fact that there would be economic implications if we had signed. We had economic implications anyway, and our new stance seems to be with the new government that green jobs can create money and that we don't have to look at environmental things as simply a deal breaker because it gives China better footing. So again, we didn't sign, but it was economic reasons. It had nothing to do with whether or not global climate change was actually happening. Okay, the location, who is going to have the biggest problem with that? We are seeing incredible action at the poles in terms of the rate of change. We also know that low-lying coastal areas 
low lying coastal, sorry, it takes me a while to spell and write. Low lying coastal areas, see, I told you, those places are more likely to flood, but eventually everybody is going to feel massive impacts. We already are. Places like Australia with massive wildfires, places like Georgia with droughts that we have not seen to this extent before. So everybody is feeling the consequences, but the biggest problems are going to come first at the poles and in low-lying coastal areas. Okay, so that's the greenhouse effect. This has to do with temperature and it has to do with the troposphere. Nothing else, nothing else. The stratospheric ozone issue, what it does, the stratospheric ozone is Earth's sunscreen. So up here I'm going to write sunburns. Because what the stratos stratospheric ozone layer does is protect us from burns, okay? Now, if you've ever been skiing, you know that you can get a sunburn on a cold day. So the temperature sunburn relationship is not existent. What I want you guys to get more than anything is that increased CO2 does not put holes in the ozone layer, okay? That is the most common mistake we see on your FRQs all the time. It's people say, more greenhouse gases, which makes a hole in the ozone layer. No, it doesn't. The increase in greenhouse gases stays in the troposphere. But there is one exception, and we're going to get to that here in a minute. So the explanation here of the good and natural state of our stratospheric ozone the ozone layer, which remember ozone is O3, so you already see one little overlap right there. O3 is here. Down in the bottom, it's bad. In the troposphere with us, it's bad. In the stratosphere up high, it's good. But we do see ozone in both places. Now what's happening is that the ozone layer blocks UV radiation but it blocks it to different extents. It blocks almost all, I'm going to go ahead and write all, but it blocks almost all UVC radiation. That's the highest energy radiation. It blocks most UVB radiation. And it blocks, again, it's almost all, um, but it lets just a little bit, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm going the wrong way blocks all of the UVC, most of the UVB, and very little UVA. I have those right. Okay. So what that means is that the least powerful sun rays are getting through. So those UV rays have been coming through forever, and that's an okay thing. Most of the UVB rays have been blocked, and all the UVC rays have been blocked by the ozone layer. Now the problem is that this is not what's happening now. We don't have normal or natural good state. Instead, we have the problem that we call the hole in the ozone layer. The explanation for this, what you have is CFCs, which are, remember, chlorofluorocarbons. Okay, and the real formula for CFC, and forgive me a second because I have to get my textbook out anytime I do chemistry, but the real formula we're looking for is it's actually, even though we say chlorofluorocarbon, it's actually the carbon four first, and then the fluorine, and then the chlorine, and there's three of them. Okay, now what happens in this reaction is that these CFCs head up into the stratosphere because they're very light, they're aerosols, and, and it's easy for them to do that. And then they're going to combine with the UV radiation from the sun, and what happens is that we get a splitting off. One chlorine atom goes off on its very own, and the CFCl2 that remains, remains. 
Now this CL is not happy on his own, and so he's going to attack an O3 molecule. He's going to attack an ozone, and that is going to create a ClO, and it's going to create an O2. And you guys sure remember from chemistry that O2 is pretty happy all by itself. Well, the ClO is not as happy as it could be because the O really ultimately wishes that it could be with another oxygen. And so it's going to break apart and it's going to go and become a Cl and an O2 when it meets up with another ClO. And this Cl is going to go back and repeat this process again and again and again. Now, some really important things to take note of is that number one, it takes about 20 years for CFCs to make it up into the stratosphere. And number two, they can remain for, I think in your book it says, let me get this right, 65 to 385 years. So once they're there, they're going to keep doing this process again and again and again for anywhere from 65 to 385 years. Okay, we're going to bring that up again in a second. So this process keeps going on and on and on and on. The chemical compounds responsible, again, we're going to say the CFCs. But the other thing that's responsible that you should know the name of is halons. There were some others mentioned in notes you should at least be able to identify, but being able to list CFCs and halons on an FRQ would be an amazing and invaluable thing. So CFCs and halons are responsible. We do have an international agreement. Like over here, it is a protocol. It is the Montreal Protocol. easy to remember I always tell my classes because we bombed Japan and we are friends with Canada we make fun of them but we're still friends with them but we actually dropped you know a pretty large bomb a couple times on Japan they bombed Pearl Harbor not friends we didn't sign Montreal we fought wars with them we are friends so we did sign and this called for a ban on CFCs by 1990. We'll have to ask Miss Suttles, but I knew I had big hair back then. I used Rave hairspray and it was full of CFCs and they took it off the market right when I hit about sixth or seventh grade. And man, it was hard to do your hair with a pump spray until they figured out how to get those aerosols back in. We didn't have products that came out in steady stream spray. Everything became pump spray until we found a replacement for CFCs. So that's an important fact to note, is that we didn't have a replacement for CFCs. The decision was made by the governments of multiple countries that this problem was bad enough that we needed to stop immediately without any concern for economics. We stopped making all those products. Those companies had to work something out. So important to note, we're gonna come back to the dates here in a second. Location, who's got the biggest problem with this? Well, the hole itself is located over Antarctica. But the problems for people are going to be largely in Australia. During certain parts of the year, the hole does extend over Australia. Children in Australia are strongly encouraged, if not made, to wear hats when they go out on playgrounds. Playgrounds are typically covered by shade structures because it is that severe a problem of skin cancers. So again, very, very big problem for people that live further and further south. And Australia is one of the furthest south places people live. One of the earliest things that we saw with this in animals was in Patagonia. And I remember, gosh, it must be decades ago now, reading about blind penguins living in Patagonia because they're exposed to more UV radiation. And animals have fur, so they're not as likely to get skin cancer like we are. Um, but 
their eyes are not blocked by anything. Sunglasses actually help to prevent blindness and cataracts that's caused by that extra UV radiation. So all that said, let's go back to these dates. Now something interesting to note here is that in 1990 we banned CFCs, but let's look at this. On the timeline, if we ban them in 1990, but then it takes, up here we said, about 20 years to make it up into the stratosphere, that puts us at, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not even doing my math right, that puts us at 2010. So only now have we finally stopped getting more CFCs into the atmosphere. But remember, that's about an average. So, you know, it's happened now-ish. Now, there's an extra 65 to 385 years where these things are going to remain active. So again, on the short end of the spectrum, we are looking at not seeing any real improvements until at least 2075. That's when we'll, pro I'm sorry, that's when we will possibly start to see the number of ozone depleting reactions lowering and the ozone layer building itself back up. Now this is important to note because people thought back in even around the 2000s that since this Montreal Protocol had gone into effect that we would start seeing recovery within about 50 years. By about 2010, we realized that wasn't happening. Instead, the problem was continuing to get worse. And so going in and looking at the real math of it, it makes sense why. Because even toward 2010, you are just then getting the CFCs from 1990 to make it all the way up into the stratosphere and start breaking down those particles. And again, once they're there, they just keep acting and reacting and reacting. Okay, now I'm going to do a really quick job down here with this Venn diagram. Again, it was just an idea to show you guys where some of the differences and similarities lie. So over here, I'm going to have climate change. And over here, I'm going to have the ozone hole. Okay, now let's start out with the basic top thing that we've got, which is, where is this happening? Yes, they're both happening in the atmosphere, but it's very different locations. We've got the troposphere, and we've got the stratosphere. Okay, what kind of problem is it causing? This is causing a heating problem. This is causing a sunburning problem. Cancer, more specifically. Okay, so the two things are not related. You do not have to have a hot day to get a sunburn. Okay, correct. Been scanned, you know that. So again, things that change the climate do not cause cancer. So let's go down a little bit more. What's really happening here? Let's see. Let's go with some of our gases. We've got H2O, CO2, CH4, N2O. Now, some similarities. CFCs are involved in both. Ozone is mentioned in both. It is a culprit in both places. Sorry, CFC is a culprit in both places. Ozone is a bad guy here. Ozone is a good guy. I'm going to write that down. Ozone bad. Over here, ozone, good. All right, we've got some of our similarities and differences now. Let's keep going. We've got treaties like Kyoto, Japan, or the one signed in Montreal, Canada. Now, how did the U.S. vote? Big old no to Kyoto. How did the U.S. vote over here? They said, sure thing, we'll help you out. All right. Now, who is going to be hard hit? Well, Antarctica is taking a hard hit with both. But you also have, sorry, let me scoot this up a little bit. Antarctica is going to be hard hit with both. But you also have over here 
the North Pole getting a hard hit. Not so much over here, but the North Pole and coastal areas. Okay? And that's about as basic as you can get things dealing with climate change versus the hole in the ozone layer.